wondering what the world was coming to and in came this freak and said there's some kind of scene happening on the other side of town. It took us a while to hang it all together with the babies and the big kids and everyone was carrying bags of bottles and nappies when someone remembered we'd forgotten the papers. And it was back up the car and back into the house and one of the kids needed a shit and couldn't wait. And by then a whole crowd of folks were in the car and three dogs. Oh, look who just rocked into town. Stashed a pack and there was plenty of time for a quick smoke just to help the things mellow out. Well, the terror of Brown Hill Creek had Adelaide heads, Queensland heads and Buddha and the Carlo and the lounge room all partook of cocktail bongs and we rolled up the crumbs of the gels and weed left over from before the last drought where the kids started playing up. Things were going much too slow. Sunshine White speeded things up. The two cassette machines were on, Bob Dylan and Leonard Cohen, both playing their greatest hits. And we wanted Mystic Rose to spin us out, all still going to the scene happening on the other side of town. So we went on and picked up a couple more cars and someone was screaming on the road, dope, sucking on a stick of cans collapsed with a dash of Sydney steel, but the Wanneroo Wonder had it all sussed out. Across the road, dope, and there it was, in living technicolour and tropo red, the sign, 73% price rise. How we cried, but it all turned out okay because the Spanish troubadour was loaded with Murrumbidgee Mouldy and so we were all set to go again with the 12 kids and the three cars and the big kids all on the roof racks with the dogs. We couldn't find the scene and trucked off home. Freedom, Liberty and Varn set the dogs. Samadhi swallowed the safety pins and everyone forgot what it was we went out for. But we'd had a real good time. Yeah. <laughs> Grandma, I hope you are feeling well. Mum told me about your heart attack. She said it saved your life. You should have been asleep when the roof collapsed on your bed. Dostoevsky has had kittens. Tolstoy is pregnant again. Dad says he really enjoys having the great men of literature giving birth all around him. Mum says he's waiting for another Shakespeare to go fishing with. As you know, the last three drowned. I think he uses them as bait. The chooks are good. Jean Reese set Charlotte Bronte's eggs. Gertrude Stein is broody. And Henry Handel Richardson's got a wing in plaster. Marge Piercy keeps on stirring up the dust. I've made a hospital for my dolls. They've all had heart attacks too, except for the ones that died when I dropped the weights on them. Mum complained a lot about the noise. I've bitten Dolly Parton's nose off and given her wig to Grace Jones. She was old anyway. Marianne Faithful's chest got broken when I tried to massage her heart. She has to have her temperature taken through her belly button now. I hope they can still take your temperature through your mouth. I hope you'll stay alive until you've read this. I'll just go and put my head into the oven now. Your loving granddaughter, Sylvia. Dear Dusty Springfield. Dear Dusty Springfield. In my bumping days, bumping days, I wanted to look like you. This is a letter I never sent. Dear Dusty Springfield, in my bopping days, I wanted to look like you. I couldn't look like Diana Dawes. She was too old and my mother said she was common and she had tits you could call tits. I couldn't be a Twiggy look-alike. She had no tits at all, so I wanted to look like you except nothing I did would make my eyelashes stay on. I was a mod for a while. But I always liked you more than Helen Shapiro or Sandy Shaw or Cilla Black or any of those girls. Then there was soul music and acid and feminism. I abandoned you, went esoteric, remembered Janice, played Joan Armour trading. Oh, Dusty, I mean, I don't even know if you're still alive, but I've been playing your records again lately and I still want to look like you. I bought a black eyeliner, I'm back in skirts, lipstick's pale again this season. Dusty, it's taken me 30 years and I'll never have the guts to peroxide my hair and wear it. But on you, I loved it, it looked really great. My brother told me he saw you on the Kenny Everett show with faint eyes and blow weight brown hair. I can understand about the hair, but he said you looked like an American TV mom. Was it really you, Dusty Springfield? 
I remember you on Ready, Steady, Go, Dusty, the white shoes, the eyelashes, you don't have to say forever. I understand, Dusty, times change. But I had to tell you, Dusty Springfield, I always wanted to look like you. This is the house. This is the house we made love in. The white wooden chair where you rolled joints in the lap of your Tamil sarong. This is the table where we rested our elbows and drank jasmine tea. There's the painting on the wall of my room, the two figures who turn their heads while we make love. And this is the creaky bed. This is the house we made love in. I live in this house with a table near the window where the sun warms feet on cold mornings. This is the house where we talked about the quality of pot and old lovers. This is the house I live in, where nothing is the same, where nothing matches, where the red tablecloth wore out and was replaced with a yellow one. This is the house where the white carnations died. This is the house where I never asked the world. This is the house I live in. This is the house we made love in. Thank you.